Oh, I don't know about you, but after the festivities and everything else, it feels like an age since we've heard all of that and got the welcome in. But I am buzzing and I'm ready for 2024 season. Happy New Year to you all and welcome to episode 77, would you believe, of Coombe TV. Absolute joy to be here uh, with you all again. And you've got the comments coming in. Keep them coming in. There's plenty of you watching. Thanks for the likes. we got Lynn Hoy, John Green, Ollie Hooper and Joe Hathaway have put the thumbs up. Evening to you all. And in terms of the comments, first in tonight, it was Duncan Harris. Great to be back racing soon. You're not wrong, my friend. You're not wrong. Mike Cotton. Hello, mate. Good to see you. You were nearly the first with the comment as well. But everybody safe. I am at the moment, mate, and you know I'm always going to be safely tucked up with Coon TV and a, a nice big gin, so uh, good to see you, my friend. Chris Rea, one of our mighty Orange Army, evening all, happy new year, looks like it's going to be busy, doesn't it just, mate, doesn't it just? Emma Brown, our Formula Ford coordinator, she's watching evening, Emma, good to see you, I missed you at Autosport, we passed like ships in the night, didn't we? But uh, we will see you at Coombe, I have no doubt. Steve Waite. I'm not sure what that emoji is. I'm hoping that's a good one, Steve. <laughs> but he does say Happy New Year as well. So keep the comments coming in. Plenty of questions as well. Oh, look at this. Our very own Kat. She's watching on YouTube tonight. Uh, evening to you, Kat. It was lovely catching up with you at Autosport. Gerald Howell, evening, everybody. Welcome to the show, mate. Good to see you back here again. So tonight we have got Paul Cohen over from New Zealand at the moment. Just for a little bit longer, we've got we had to nab him before he went flying back again from My Race Lab, that are one of our fabulously exciting sponsors and partners that we're going to be working with a lot. And we're going to give you a bit of an amuse bouche about what My Race Lab are all about, because I've got to tell you, I think there's a lot of you that are going to be very interested in this. It's suddenly something that seemed unachievable to the club racers, we can do an awful lot more with. So we're going to find out about that. But brilliantly, much to his chagrin, Paul Cohen has been conned into being my co-host for tonight, thereafter as well. I can see him laughing in the background. I think I officially stitched him up on this one, but we're going to have a good giggle. He's my kind of guy. We're going to have a, a good laugh. Uh, we're then going to bring out three out of the four of our champions from 2023. We're going to start with Felix Fisher, our Formula 4 champion. we got Sean Deacon from the Hot Hatches. And then in the throes of putting the kids to bed at the moment, Mike Good will be with us, our saloon car champion. He's been trying for some time and he's got it. So we're going to catch up with him. Pete Spiller, evening, Dorsey. Great to hear your dulcet tones again. Thank you, my friend. It's great to be back here, mate. You know I love it. And I look forward to seeing you guys back out there again in that Audi TT. I'm sure that your boy will be uh, back out there again. Stuart Tinker Taylor. Hello, mate. Good evening to the voice of Castle Coon. Bless you. Uh, hopefully catch up with you soon from a fuffer loving Camp Softcore fan. Dilly dilly, if you insist, mate. Dilly dilly indeed. So, without further ado, let's get the next person out there, as I say, is going to be Paul Cohen from My Race Lab. Hello, Hello, sir. I've been properly stitched up here, haven't I? Yeah, I'm afraid you have, mate, but you wouldn't expect <laughs> anything different from me. We might have only met that once, but you knew what my the cut of my jib was like <laughs> straight away. <laughs> but how are you? Uh, you've been having a very busy trip over here in uh, Blighty, haven't you? Yeah, no, it's been good. So, so we obviously met at the Autosport Show, which was great. It's great to kind of um, meet the people from Castle Coombe and, and, you know, meet general people just wandering around the show and wanting to know more about my race lab. But... Uh, so that was great. And then off to Liverpool and uh, a few more meetings and then um, finally managed to grab some time with the family. So here for four days and then off to sunny New Zealand. I left 35 degree weather to sunny yeah. England. <laughs> Welcome, mate. Welcome to the wind and the rain and everything. You know, it's it's yeah, great. And good. I apologise that I, you know, you thought you had time with the family and I nabbed you before. you. No, just... no, no, it's fine. It's fine. I'm excited. I'm excited. And I think this year, actually, with Castle Coombe. It's an exciting partnership, and we're, we're keen to see where it can go and what journeys we can go on. Well, you know, let's step back to the beginning is, speak to us, what is My Race Lab? Yeah, good question. So um, about three, three and a half years ago, um, we had this crazy idea that um, right now, 
the you've got a lot of kind of apps that will tell a driver how quick they went around the tracks so or lap timers. And then you've got this kind of other side of the coin where you've got your Motex and your your those kind of ECU based apps where you almost need a degree to understand how the hell they <laughs> use it and, and operate it. So there's this big void in the middle, and, and that's where the My Race Lab idea came about. So um, the the full process behind our software is to allow drivers from any level really to bring in data um, from any hardware device. So we are agnostic, which is great because you know you've invested in hardware. You want to get that data into the app and then be able to see what was my race line? Where was I good? Where was I consistent? Where could I possibly pull some more time? And even tweaks to the car. Like, what did that do? How did that affect a certain corner? Um, so that's where my race lab comes in. And it's it really got sits in in that sweet spot in the middle there where you, you generally don't need a degree. It's modern. It looks good. It's nice to use, I'd like to think. Um, and yeah, it, it's great for everyone. Um, whether you're just starting out or whether you think, hey, data's beyond my reach, because um, literally you can do it with a mobile phone. Um, and whether you're actually, you've got some logging devices, but you just don't pull all that data out and get the best out of them. So uh, we're excited to go on some journeys with some drivers. Um, we know we're going to be at test days as well. So we'll have the ability to potentially even have a coach there and, and help people through those, those sessions and how to use it and get the most out of it. So it's exciting. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, I, I get paid to talk about it. I'm useless at, at behind yeah. the wheel and let alone all, all the technical gubbins. Yeah. Um, it's, for me, one of the simple things that I've really picked out from this is that, and I kind of alluded to it already, is that it suddenly enables all of this analysis, but even, you know, for club racers now, not it's not just the top sort of GTs and all of that. It suddenly opens it up to the masses. Well, that's it. So, and, and that's where that sweet spot was. So, you you always had like the the top guys that maybe had a data engineer, or they had that experience in reading the data, so they could get the most out of it. So, now it really opens it up to even someone who's just starting out this year, and they can they can go and they can either use their phone or they can purchase a small, yeah, you know, hundred pounds will get you a race box mini, for instance, you know, and you pop that in the car, and you're getting really accurate GPS, so you can start to see your race line and compare your laps and even share laps. So, yeah, you know, if you if you want to collaborate with another driver or coach you can share your lap with them and they can give you some feedback or you can overlay their lap and understand okay they're taking that turn very different to what i am so let's try that you know so it's um it's really insightful of what it can give you uh, and where you're losing time and where you could potentially gain time and, and picking out on the bit that you were mentioning there paul is that one of the really exciting things above and beyond just the the the, the my race lab element the, the the tech element is that you guys have now mapped castle coom circuit yes yeah yeah so we um we manually map every circuit um so we've got i would like to think every uk racing circuit um castle coom obviously being one of them um and the reason we do that is that we want you to have the highest accuracy when it comes to the race line and the worst thing is is if you go around a track and you're in the middle of a field somewhere right according to the app so yeah. you know we've got to be accurate so um, don't put it past me i probably would be to be fair yeah so. no that's it actually be accurate for me as well but you know yeah. um so yeah no we've, we've mapped every track and, and castle coom obviously the first one we've done um so we do we offer really high um and again it depends on the the gps frequency if you use a mobile phone unfortunately their gps's are horrendously bad um yeah. used really for sat nav but um, anything like a GoPro even um, or a race box or anything, any device like that, you'll get really high frequency, which means you'll get really high accuracy on the on the track. Um, and that's really important. You know, for a driver, they need to know, OK, you know, how was I taking that corner and I can't be in the field, which is number one. Yeah. And and I mean, that's forgive me. This is possibly a really daft question. This, does no. this mapping tech that you've then used, does that get able to be sold this is going to be a really silly question but no, um, right. like the gaming world as well uh so we sim, do... sim world i should say yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have with the idea of sim um we can at the moment um unofficially probably uh, bring in i racing um so if you if you race in i racing you can bring that data in and get the same um, result as what you have would have going around a track um but we have toyed with the sim world it's not something on our roadmap really yeah you know we're focused on the on the real drivers but yeah definitely like the, the thing is the gap between virtual and reality is shrinking 
Um, and it's a great training tool for drivers to you know, off season, do a thousand laps around Castle Coombe and then come back on season and be on it, you know? So yeah, absolutely. It's something we've toyed with, but um, we want to focus on the actual um, racing for now. Uh, yes, no. And I, and I completely get that one. And, and you guys, and and the, the royal you obviously yep. uh, plan to be uh, you know on site on race weekends and things like that so that yeah. people can can learn what they can do with it how they can interpret it how they can use it to to get better and things like that yeah so we're looking at being um on site definitely during test days um, we understand look, race weekend guys are busy so the last thing they want is someone like me um, especially me tapping them on the shoulder going hey look at this um so yeah test days will be the big thing where i think we'll have someone and even potentially like i say an in-house coach that will be there and, and take them through their laps and go look this is what we suggest um and again it's that whole collaboration as well so you know i know a lot of people are quite protective about their data so it's up to them whether they want to collaborate but the ability to you know tap the tap the another drive on the shoulder and go hey share me your lap or i share you mine you know and you start to compare like what each other's doing is there you know or you can either share it to your coach if you've got your own coach you can share it to him and he can then put some notes on there and and give you some advice on how to get a bit quicker and you presumably even just yourself being able to see that is something that you wouldn't necessarily keep logged at the end of a race or test or whatever else because as you said is that race lines one element but you know it's able to get data from the ecu and yeah. or, or you know what else is it all these different things it can get data from yeah so at the moment we can grab data from ecu we can grab data from a gopro we can grab data from racebox mini uh, we can obviously use the phone itself um we can grab data from there's a, a gps unit called a sky pro um so there's a lot of different units and it's all available on, on our website for if anyone wants to have a look myracelab.com um there's a lot of different units we can grab data from and it's completely free so so anyone can sign up to the app now um completely free to sign up uh we give no limitations on what you can record uh, the only limitation is you can only see the first two laps so if you but you do get um one session you can unlock for free completely free of charge um so yeah lots of devices we can we can connect to and, and the whole idea behind my race lab was that it was hardware agnostic we don't want to force you or, or Put you in a, a particular bucket um, we want you to have the choice of using the hardware you want um, and if there is any hardware we don't support let us know and we'll um we'll get it in there absolutely yeah i mean that's the beauty is that we're, we're kind of almost evolving together and i think i've got that myracelab.com that's correct isn't it you got it you got it Fab. so jump on that and i've put it in the comments so that you've got that as well um i don't think it's any great secret you guys are even linked to link engine management as well in some way aren't you yeah, so Link um, Engine Management are our parent company, if you like. Um, so oh, we're yeah. a subsidiary of them. Uh, so the whole idea was, and again, this is really, this is actually really cool. I think is that you know, Link could have made the whole stance that hey, we want you to be, you know, solely attached to our products. Um, instead, you know, I say the fact that we can support anything, I think, was a really cool idea by them. Was to say we don't want to limit it, um, but it also, you know, it really opens that data space and what we're seeing now is that data is becoming more and more important for drivers whether it be understanding how the car operates so if you're bringing your ecu data in you can understand you know, what's my oil pressure what's my fuel pressure all that sort of stuff you can start to look at and potentially even start to see problems or, or where something might happen um, as well as using that data to make you faster right which is the end goal you know our motto is to give people a win every day and whether that's pole position or just a tenth off your lap you know it's a win right so um i think that's yes yeah, so it, it's it's an exciting journey we're on and we um we're excited to be on that journey with castle coombs i think it shows how uh, how dedicated castle coombe is on on really being the forefront of that innovation of data space you know it's it's a really cool um cool thing for their drivers uh, genuinely it really really is and and we'll sort of pick up on bits and pieces on this in more detail as the show goes on yeah. as we're sort of interspersed chatting with you i think we're going to try tonight aren't we in between the yeah. champs basically <laughs> and go with that a lot so they can people can go to myracelab.com they can sign up they can have a trial version of it they can speak to you guys on test days and they can get yeah. an understanding of what they can do and look uh, 
any questions during the show, fire them up. Well, I'll Please do my do. best to do my best to answer them. And if your if your ratings plummet, I'd imagine you'll boot me off. So that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't do it, mate. Wouldn't do it. I'll just get another gin and that that'll bring them back again. Uh just quickly before we move on, because we're gonna bring our first champ out. But Emma Brown says uh, it'd be brilliant. Uh be interesting to see what the plans are for 2024. That was right at the beginning. Joe Shingler, hi everyone. Looking forward to the new season uh and new sponsors for 2024. Duffers, Darren Duffield says, evening, mate. Hello, everybody. Evening, Duffers. Gary Franks, evening all. Hello, mate. I've been loving seeing the photos of you doing that ice driving. I'm fancying that, going Porsche that ice driving. Cool. That sounds Doesn't cool. it just? Yeah. Um, I've kind of fancied that for ages, but his photos have got me properly hooked on that. Yeah. So, well, welcome back, Gary. Um, Tim Perry, one of Orange Army. Hi, everyone. Thanks, dilly dilly. Sorry I'm late. Can't wait for the season to start. I bet you can't, mate. I, I know you love it, buddy. Ignal, evening everyone. Great to see Dorsey and catch up with so many coon friends at Autosport. It was good to see you, mate. And uh, you look busy on with uh, with good old Ed Moore with the uh, with the head tech helmets and everything. Caroline, evening Caroline Sutton, evening all. That is obviously uh, the, uh, the legendary Mark Sutton's widow still hooked, and uh, and Nathan obviously still racing. It's so good to see the Sutton family still with us, strong and proud as ever. Craig Cook, evening, mate. Evening, Castle Coomers. You'll have heard his dulcet tones when the minis were racing at Coom last season. Matt Coyle, saloon car uh, coordinator, says, my eighth season at Castle Coom Racing Club, having the privilege to be part of the saloons and being there for every race and making sure teams and drivers get a bar of chocolate. I love that. See, that's even more important, Paul. you got to remember. It is. I've got to be honest. It is. I love that. I love that. <laughs> it is cool. Uh, Mike Cotton says, this is Sir Higo. First question for you, Paul. Yeah. He says, I'm not a driver. He's one of our fabulous long, long, long-term uh, spectators at the circuit. He says, not a driver, but does it help you to interpret the data? So does my race lab help you to interpret it? Yeah, massively. It yeah, and, yeah. Like honestly, like um, I've tried to use the the um, ECU software. I won't name any brands, but I've tried to use it, most of them. And yeah. oh my god, it's like a minefield. Um, so yeah, the, yeah. The My Race Lab has been a hundred percent designed to make it silly easy. Um, so yeah, you put your data in, and straight away, you know, it's got everything you need, and it's so easy to use, um, so intuitive. So, and that's a that's a great thing in the world we live in today, right? With the mobile apps and stuff, that they become so intuitive to use and so easy that, um, yeah, like it, it's it's just actually a bit of a breath of fresh air. And I know I work for my race lab, and I need to say this, but honestly, it's a breath of fresh air that it's just so easy. You know, there's a lot of old dated apps out or, or old dated software out there that is for this and, and to have something that's a bit more newer and fresher and modern and so easy to use yeah it's, it's great um and you can bring in it, we don't um limit any of the data so if your data source has 400 channels you'll see all 400 channels of data and be able to do whatever you want with it so yeah really easy i love that and that's a good question from mike for someone that as he said no, is is. driver. Right. But it's not about just suddenly presenting it in another way, but it's about making it understandable what you're looking at. Yeah, it just means that, you know, you pick up the app and you, it doesn't feel foreign, right? You don't have to yeah. really learn anything. You know, within an hour, you're actually seeing benefits. And it gives you automatic insights. So it might straight away tell you, hey, turn one, focus on that, because that's where you're least consistent. So straight away, <laughs> you're getting these kind of insights going, oh, geez, let's have a look at turn one and let's compare a few laps against that and see what happens. So, yeah, really easy. Uh, I love this. Pete Spiller, um, he says, is my Nokia 3310 compatible? <laughs> he probably does still um, have one, knowing Pete. <laughs> hey, unfortunately not. I'll be honest no. with you. Um, so it is available on iPhone and Android. Um, and Nokia 3310 is probably the greatest phone in the world, though. So, um, but no, it's not. No, no. I, I'm, and Pete would have known that, bless him. He'd have known it. He's, <laughs> he's a stirrer, he is. Uh, no, like, like, like a phone that lasts four weeks is revolutionary. Absolutely, yeah. Right. Uh, Peggy Spackman, evening to you, Peggy. Good to hear from you. Uh, Emma Brown, she's uh, the, the Formula 4 coordinator. She's followed on from uh, Matt's comment about being proud about being the coordinator of the saloons. Have to agree, I'm going to my fourth season already, looking after the mighty Formula 4. It's a privilege to be part of such a great circuit. 
Gary Franks has given me an instruction now how I've got to say his next message because he's the one that went ice racing in the Porsche and he has said that it was super cool ice ice baby ding 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 ding, ding. he told me I had to sing it so uh, nice. just to, just to prove it he did he said I had to sing it look right should we get one of our first champs out then sounds good do it so let's get He's just suddenly leapt into action in the background. I can see. <laughs> focus, Felix, focus. Uh, it is our Formula 4 champion, Felix Fisher. <laughs> Let's switch it around because you've got to have the headline act there. Good evening, Felix. Hello, how are we doing? Yeah, I'm okay, mate. I'm okay. It's good to see you again. Now, first of all, I'm going to take the lead. And just, Paul, if you've got any questions, feel free to jump in. If you don't, it's fine. It's not a problem. I've stitched you up, as we said already on this one. (laughs) But, Felix, 2022 was the monkey off the back. You followed it up, mate. I mean, how did that feel? Yeah, uh, you know, really good, really good, (laughs) as you can imagine, really. Um, You know, the first... The first year I'd done the championship was 2008 um, and I was runner up and won the Class B championship. And then I did the same in 2009. Um, and then you got to wait until 2022 to win the thing outright. So, you know, it was, um, yeah, it definitely was got the monkey off the back and um, continued it for, for, for last year, which which obviously was great. So, um, yeah, thrilled really, because, you know, to, to win it once is a privilege, but to um, to back it up is 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 brilliant and and that was the interesting thing for me is that i mean clearly 2022 the emotion was there for everybody to see because obviously the <laughs> fisher family has got a very strong link to castle Coombe and and you could see how much it meant to you and and, and all of that sort of stuff and at that point you weren't quite sure what 23 was going to be all about but you just couldn't resist and t- the, your hunger it did not diminish in the slightest did it <laughs> no, it only got more. I think, if I'm honest with you, um, we were ju- before we clinched it in 2022. We sort of said, right, if we do it, that's it, we're done. <laughs> 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 and um, you know what? It's like Christmas time comes and goes, and you're wondering what to do. And then we said, oh, well, no pressure. Let's go back and do it again. And um, we won the first four races. And then you're thinking it's on again so <laughs> yeah but the battle with luke went right to the very end and um it was yeah the hard, the hardest season i've been part of for sure and um it'll be very memorable put it that way it was because i mean there was a good few that were in there sort of battling away it was just epic to watch and even better to be able to to commentate on i think it's probably you know guys like you that got me sent off in an ambulance you know it's having to deal with that level of excitement but it 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 was just so impressive to see i mean was it a case of i often wondered the fact that i mean we call it the monkey off the back because it's just the easy thing to say did that release any of the pressures at all for the for 2023 yeah definitely definitely yeah you know it was yeah because we you know it was um it was a proud moment and it was a privilege to turn up with number one on the car and being the course, the reigning course. champion and and things but um it was kind of we just took off where we left off um i think we only had half a day in the car before the start of the year and i literally we jumped in the car and said right let's let's go and um and yeah it was i think it was that fact that i know i had done it i know i could do it yes. and yeah. i just got into that rhythm of well, let, let's go and do it again. And um, like I say, it was a competitive field last year. You had lots, you know, it was competitive at the front. And um, and it was probably, you know, the, the grids at Coombe were good. And it was, you know, one of the most competitive in the country. So it was, um, like you say, a good a good achievement again. Yeah, take it from us, mate. It was exciting to watch, I can assure you. It was absolutely epic. I mean, after drop scores... It was four points in it. I mean, okay, if, it, if we ignore drop scores, it was something like 12 points in it. But, you know, it was really, really close. But, yeah, as you say, you started off with one, two, three, four victories, then a, a couple of seconds, 
Then suddenly a rogue third appeared uh, in July. Then it's back to win it again. We'd probably skate over the next race where there was the DNF. And <laughs> it came back with, with a victory, a second. And then suddenly the final round, what was that? That was first, second, another third there. Was that just sort of taking it easy and seeing it, bring it home? I, I had won, I'd clinched the championship in that first race. when That's I right, to, yeah. And um, yeah, I kind of, we kind of went out for a bit of fun, but then the mindset had changed because I was at Brands Hatching two weeks later. Ah, uh, yeah. So it was, it was kind of go out, have a motor race, have some fun. Don't take any risks now because the job's done and the car's got to go out again in a fortnight. So, True. you know, it was kind of, yeah. Yeah. And of course, that's the Formula 4 festival. It was a, a big one, isn't it? And, and then you did do the water haze as yeah. well, didn't you? Yeah. So that yeah. was only the week after that again, wasn't it? it so. manic, manic end of the year because you had the, the championship decider. Yeah. And then a fortnight later was the festival. A fortnight later was water haze and a fortnight later we had the awards do yes of course yeah. um we we're all we we're all glad to call it a day then actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> but it's the usual thing is that now we've suddenly got christmas out of the way we're suddenly kind of going um i don't really know what to do now <laughs> doesn't matter how busy we're missing that 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 racing season i mean paul just bringing you in to, to get you involved in this have you watched the formula fords at castle Coombe yet I have, and I've actually, so I, I follow Formula Ford. I've watched it there, and I follow it in New Zealand as well, because it's an exciting um, yeah. discipline, if I'm honest, really close racing. And I actually had a question, and it's completely off the cuff, and I'm, I'm sorry, but is there anything you do particular pre-season to kind of get ready for the new season, or is it literally a, hey, look, I'm pre-season, I'm off, I'm going to relax, forget about racing, and then um, and then straight into it on the, in the season? I'm just interested to kind of know how you keep the kind of focus, if you like. Um, to be honest, there's no, there's no routine. Um, I love my motorsport. So, you know, I'm always, even if it's watching the launch of the new F1 cars and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just, yeah, but there's no, there's no sort of routine to, to getting back into it really. You know, okay. it's, uh, I don't, I don't shy away from it or totally get away from it, but, um, yeah, when the day comes, we, we turn it on really. No, it's good. I like it. That's a that's a very confident answer. I'm I'm kind of nervy to ask this one. I'm going to ask it anyway because I actually genuinely don't know the answer to this one. Are we going to see you 2024? If I'm completely honest, I don't know the answer myself yet. <laughs> okay, okay. Which I guess <laughs> that's probably no different to last year, really. Then from what you were saying. No, if I'm honest, we didn't decide until it was about three weeks before the first round last year. Wow, really close knit, and um, and then it, it all happened. Um, I to be honest with you, I do I need to speak to you know Tom at TM Racing and things. I did quickly, briefly chat with him, and it was about something else. Um, last week for about five minutes, and we sort of casually said, "Oh, we should meet up and have a drink and talk about what plans are and bits and bobs." So, you know, I'm sure that'll happen. Um, in the next couple of weeks, and we'll go from there, really. Well, you know, we hope we, we, we'll see you back there again. Emma Brown, your coordinator, says, Evening, Felix, another great year last season. And uh, Tim, one of our uh, Orange Army, says, Nice and laid back, then, basically, <laughs> summing you up perfectly there, isn't it, really? And that's, that's the thing. I, I've got a question then. I mean, I've only ever known you in the Formula Fords. Have you ever, and do you have a desire to jump into anything else other than the Formula Ford? Yeah, yeah, lots of things. Um, yeah, I, I started off in Formula Jedi, which oh blimey, yeah, was, was brilliant. I'm not going to lie, they're yeah. lightning quick, aren't they? They're bonkers. Yeah, they 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 were fantastic. You know, six, sixteen year old revving up to fifteen thousand RPM. You really thought you were you know the bee's knees really um so it did that for about a season and then i sort of took a big jump then and went into formula renault oh, yeah. um so that was good you know obviously it was it was tough but but good um 
learned, learned a lot but in a way i wish i wish i'd done that later on in my racing days if you see what i mean because i was 18 yeah. at the time and you still you still got a lot to learn a lot to learn yeah because that's that formula renault that will have been wings and slicks wouldn't it yeah that's right yeah so yeah. um but no we had a respectable um we were top 10 we was our seventh i think it was 2007 um in, in the, like the UK championship, there was like 30 odd cars. So it was, um, you know, it was a good effort really. And then I did, and then really that was when Formula Fording started from 2008, to be honest. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I did a little bit of the Duratec when it was Duratec, like the UK Formula Ford, um, did a bit of kind of, um, there was a team called Ju uh, Juno and they bought out a, a Formula Ford and it needed a bit of development and, and things. So, I did a bit of that and um but then really just been just been kent formula ford from you know from around 2008 2009 to to you know to now i'm still going they just do look so much fun and i think like you said do it the other way around i've always said that formula fours are just a vital stepping stone if for for youngsters because you learn mechanical grip in them don't you there's no there's no, no aids to it whatsoever uh, and you learn that, but the problem is, is that you've got to be a little bit older before you can start in them. Sadly, don't you? I think I think it's a good thing. You know, Formula Ford. You get a lot. You get a lot of drivers that have um, have done lots of formulas early on. Um, but we all know it's tough. We all know it's, it's expensive, and you need a lot of backing. Um, but everyone finds a common ground in you know by going to, back to Formula Ford. You know, you think my brother's been. He was Formula Renault, Formula BMW, Formula Three, and you got people like Joey Foster that have done yeah. Formula 3, Formula Renault, LMP stuff. Um, lots of people around that have done a lot of motorsport. Um, and then when it's not as much of a career path, they think, let's go, you know, let's go for enjoyment. Let's go Formula Ford. Let's, um, let's go racing sort of thing. Yeah, they're back to the roots of actually enjoy it. Um, a question here from our, our legendary Mike Cotton says, Felix, do you use the gym in the close season to keep fit? I won't lie to you. No, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an electrician by trade and most of my days are spent, um, drilling holes, pulling in cables, chasing walls. And so I'm often knackered. So, um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's your talent, more, more talent. I love the laid backness, you know, I, I love Two children under the age, you know, from one's, fit, right? one's coming up two. It's um, yeah, that's that's yeah. physical enough as well. So with the journey uh, you've had through through your motor racing career, has data played an important um, kind of role in that, or you know, has have you used data more and more as you've gone through, or do you not use that data at all? I'm just interested to kind of know. In the in the last couple of years, um, a bit more. I must admit, my teammates quite g gemmed up on that um, yeah. and uses it quite a lot. So he gets out. I, I'm not very, I, I'm more hands on. I'm not very yeah. technical yeah. <laughs> on the, on the, you know. Oh. Over the last... oh, we lost him. Oh, oh he's back. back. Hang on. Back. He's back. So you're saying you're yeah. not very hands on. Yeah. I, I Yeah, I, I'm more practical. I'm not, I'm not too good on the kind of, um, computer bits and downloaded and apps and but my teammates been very, is very good with that he, and um we have been using it you know quite a bit so so i can learn and, and also so he can learn and the yeah, team yeah, can yeah. learn so awesome. um yeah yeah i must have, uh, the last two two seasons definitely it's become a become a factor cool which is interesting and they're the two years that he won championships exactly. oh, i didn't want to say anything i didn't want to say anything but yes you're right i'll let i'll let you have that soundbite paul for your marketing that's fine You've that, got yeah. it. he used data and he's won the championship that's what yeah. it's all about <laughs> but i mean felix is that um obviously your your everything you've done has been single seaters and i will just quickly ask this question have you had or do you have a desire to jump into anything that's not a single seater I have had a go in a sports car before, um, but it was only it was only a couple test sessions really. It was just shaking shaking it down for some people. Um, I don't know really. I, I, I can tell I, from I, that reaction I, it hasn't floated your boat much, has it? Really? I'd, I'd drive anything, I think, really. But but um, I can I'd imagine. Like to, yeah. 
I'd like to have a go in a 90s Formula One car, but there's not many around and I don't know anyone that's got one. So, um, you know, I'll have to, I'll have to wait for that opportunity, won't I? But yeah, um, you will, you will. How old yeah. are you? 35. So there's still plenty of time. Let's get you into a GT as well as a Formula Ford, you know, that you know, with as a pro driver, uh, alongside a, a a gentleman driver or whatever you want to call them. That would I did work see, I did see the Sports Two Thousands last year at Coombe, and they look oh, really nice. And serious bang for your buck with those things, definitely. I agree. Um, the, the reason why I was obviously asking is that your dad's background that I know is in the GTs. Or the special yeah. GT, should we say? Yeah, and and that's totally different to where you you and your brother went, isn't it? Yes, yeah. I mean, they were monsters back in the day. The yeah, special GT proper. Um, yeah, he needed some minerals to drive them round, Coom. I can tell you, but um, <laughs> yeah, 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 they were um, no, they were like you say. I you know growing up at Coom from a young age, really, and that was the days before the chicanes as well. So it was mighty quick, and. Um, but yeah, Josh has done a bit. Josh has done a bit of, um, you know, sports cars and things. Yeah, so true. Uh, so yeah, but you never know. You never know. There might be there might be an opportunity one one day. So uh, don't get me wrong. I I don't want to lose you from uh, from our uh, you know Formula Four Championship. To be honest with you, mate. But you know, it seems I always wonder what everybody's mindset is uh, with these kind of things uh, as as well. So two has been one. He, he, he's back again <laughs> quick though he comes back in we lose you nobody get loses their signal and back again as quick as you i'm impressed with that but um you've got the two and the three back to back that would be a big deal as well wouldn't it it would yeah yeah it would yeah <laughs> i'm not one to stir or out <laughs> no pressure <laughs> But that's a big motivator to be able to go for something like that would be really cool as well. Um, but what I love is that you know that you can't just rock up and it's a done deal. But I reckon no. you'd be bored with that if it was. Uh, it's, um, yeah, it's been, you know, it's been so competitive. That's what's kept you going. And you haven't been able to rest at all. Not, you know, the commit, the commitment, not just by myself, but by you know, the team and everything has had to be, you know, for me to get those results, the cars had to be tip top. It's had to be reliable. It's had to be on the button, you know, um, yeah. it's so many, it's so many factors. I must, I must admit that, um, you know, it's not just good to do it for myself. It's good to do it for them because the amount of work they put in is, is unreal really, you know? Yeah. Agreed. So, Agreed. Uh, so yeah, well, you know, it's, um, it was great to do it, you know, two two years on the bounce because that was um, a lot of hard work by everyone. Yeah, I agree. Tim Perry from the Orange Army says no, stay in the fuffers. So he wants you to stay in the Formula Fords there. So uh, Goose from the Quarry Hardcore, uh, he says evening Formula Fords has and always will be number one. Loved the racing. Not a lot is closer. Felix and Luke really made last year, especially showing the American stars how it's done. That's an interesting point, actually, Felix, is that those the Americans turn up, and, and I'm a huge fan of them coming and, and applying their trade because some of them go on to some very interesting careers, but they do not get their own way against you and Luke, do they? I don't think many people do, though, do they? Really? No. I love it. I love that fact is it's so, so good is that I don't think they ever rock up arrogant or anything. They don't expect it to be easy, but I do just love that people turn up and kind of go, oh, heck, you boys like know yeah. your way around that circuit. Yeah, we do. We do. We know. I mean, Luke lives at Quarry and um, yeah, true. I'm, I'm only an hour down the road. But um, yeah, I think it's a bit of a culture shock to them when they come back, you know, and they actually think, oh, wow, you know, this is going to be difficult. But um, they do get but, better, though, don't they? As the weekend goes on, they are keeping you guys honest, to be fair to them. Yeah, though. no, they do. They do. And then by the time they get the brands and get the Silverstone, they're really they're really on it. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's a good plan. Listen, Felix, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Any other questions, Paul, before I wrap this part? No, up? no I'm good. Thank you. Thank you. Felix, cool. thank you so much for coming on. Any shout out? I think you've been doing the shout outs, really. But take the opportunity if you wanted to. 
but from me to say congratulations on uh, defending your championship and we hope to see you back this year. Shout out if you want. Cool. Well, like you say, no, thanks for having me on. I'm glad I can make it this time. And um, <laughs> yeah, no, we'll see. Um, I think I think you'll see me, you'll, you know, you'll definitely see me about. I'm, I, I'll be definitely be doing some racing this year. So I haven't finalised plans yet, but that's not not normal at the moment, you know. No, yeah. So, um, so uh, yeah, I'm sure I'm sure I'll be, you know, I'll be around. But in what in what shape or form is yet to be decided. But I'll I'll be I'll be around. Put it that way. Well, Tim Perry says thanks, Felix. See you at Coombe, hopefully, uh, and and I agree. So, thank you, mate, for joining us. Go and enjoy the rest of your evening, my friend. No worries. You guys take care. Cheerio. Right, I think we need to get straight on with the next one because that was a good, yeah. uh, detailed one. And bless him, this guy's been waiting for a very, very long time. Apologies, Sean, um, but hopefully been glued to it as well. It is a hot hatch driver that we're bringing out next. Uh, Goody, you're going to have to wait there for a little bit longer, mate, but at least you're there now. <laughs> um, it is the last year of these being a series, but we know that we still sort of count things up and everything. And we got our champion this year. And we're going to find out that he hasn't been racing for that long and yet he's nailed it. So let's bring out a hot hatch champ. <laughs> Sean Deacon. Hello, my friend. Hello, Mr. Dawes, all right? How you doing, mate? How's uh, have you have you come down after a brilliant 2023 yet? Uh yeah, just just slightly. Uh still. <laughs> Still buzzing, still taking it all in. Um, yeah, it was a a very, very good year, very busy year, unexpected year. Um, you know, you don't, you don't sort of. It's my f third, third, fourth season. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So three, four seasons and a, and a half season during COVID. Um, yeah. yeah, you know, and I, I'm not from a racing back back background. Um, you know, I haven't got family or a dad or anybody who was sort of into racing so for me it was a quite a big step um we spoke, spoke to my wife and said for my 40th i fancy uh giving it a, giving it a go <laughs> um which is what i done so yeah you know i started off and getting a third place in i think the second season was the best thing in the world wow. um you know getting that little tiny little trophy saying third place was yeah, yeah un un unbelievable i didn't think i better beat it and yeah you know two years later obviously a lot of help from um you know the team was that I associated with and um Will and Sean obviously give me a lot of mentoring which helps um great team I'll give them a little plug um definitely, yeah. definitely big big deal those team I mean that's some serious pedigree there isn't it of past and present and uh, and what have you I mean I still remember when we did the uh we were forced to do the awards do so what would that have been 2021 so the year after the main COVID year and we had to do the awards do at Castle Coombe in the Strawford Centre uh and from memory you you'd achieved quite a bit that year as well hadn't you to be honest yeah, although obviously we're not counting points, it was I won overall most wingless driver again, I think. Yes. Um, but it didn't feel it's difficult, I think. I don't know, I don't want to say the wrong thing, but it's it's difficult as a class C driver, especially if you only get four or five cars in a race. Um, you don't necessarily I think the best I this year overall I came second, which you know, I'm I'm that's as good as winning my class. Yeah. Yeah. Um I, I backed off. I would like to have given Anthony Cooper a little bit more of a run for his for, for his money. I think it was the last race or a second from the last race. And I kind of knew I had to just bring the car home and win my class to to get my nine straight 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 wins. Um so yeah, I kind of is is I still don't I'd like to win a race overall because I think that is then you can kind of class it as a real a real champion or a real win, I suppose. You know, I'm not going to take anything away from it. I'm still, you know, massively proud of myself, but I am chasing. Obviously, I'm going up a class this this year. I've had an engine upgrade, which we're still fettling with. And actually, I'm going to speak to Paul because I might need a I might need a bit yeah. of a, a bit of his software, um, <laughs> more hardware. Yeah. So, um, so interestingly, you said you didn't come from a motor racing background. Um, so what was kind of, I suppose, the biggest challenge for you? entering um the racing scene like, what, what do you find the hardest to kind of overcome or, or understand um so without without going too far into it or, or boring anybody i mean i've 
I, I was I've always been a sporting person. Um, up until the age of 16, I, I competed at a very high level in bas basketball. Um, I've always I've always enjoyed all, all sorts of sports. I've always, you know, I've always been very sporting. Um, I had an accident when I was young, 16, which um, meant that I couldn't do any any physical sport. You know, my, my legs are, are quite weak. So then they're not I'm not you know, I'm not I'm all right. You know what I mean? But um, I'm not able to compete in what I would call a sport. So therefore, I kind of give up on on that side of my life if if you like and i concentrated on my business and the businesses have done gone reasonably well um you know got a nice family and you know life's all right i can afford to race um so you know life's had some changes and i think when i hit 40 i was like i need to do something competitive where where although it's still very physical and it and it is a sport it's yeah. not necessarily i think you can put you know somebody who's less abled or from any walk of life um, and if they've, you know, especially with the hot hatch, it's more sort of entry level cars. You can, you can go straight in and, and race. Okay. You might, you know, you might come in off the road with a very, very standard car and you might not better pick up silverware, but you can race. Yeah. Sure. Um, so that was kind of like my, my thinking towards it. It was a massive step because I've, you know, cause I'm worried about safety. Um, I hurt, hurt my neck. So you know, I was a little bit worried about safety, but, um, compared to the other sports that I still do, it's probably, um, it's probably safer. I don't know. If, I don't touch wood. You're more looked um, after, aren't you? Yeah. yeah everything's yeah. there available. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So that's how I got into it, really. And I, I know, as I said, it was my 40th. Um, I did sell my wife on one year, one one year. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm hooked now. I'm, I'm, well, yeah. I that, that old chestnut, the one year chestnut. <laughs> 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 one year and it's a standard joke it cost me 50 pound pound a year that's the that's the standard joke so <laughs> i know she's I listening it. so i'll be very careful did you, do, <laughs> did you do like track days or anything first or did you go straight yeah. into the racing yeah so i had a i had um do you know uh obviously d d d y d d uh engines i had him build me a i was always into my i've always been into cars i've had a skyline i've had a few fast cars on the right. road but nowadays you can't drive them it's not safe to drive you know too fast on the road so um i started doing track days maybe eight years ago maybe 10 years ago eight eight eight, eight nine years ago oh, okay. um and i had a i had a honda civic built for me which was a um a frankenstein engine so it was a k24 and a k20 married married up and it was an absolute animal um and i was able to bring my times down on track days to a point where i thought well actually i'm not i'm not a million miles away from um sort of the hot hatch level now but the civic i had was a 2.4 and a quarter so it would have put me straight in the gt which i did not want to do you know uh -huh. to come in and try and yeah it wasn't going to happen so i sold that and that's what helped me fund um sort of like the start of my racing paul bird helped you know i bought a, a shell off off of him and a cage and a, an older engine and um he sort of helped me get into it um and then I, you know, after the first season obviously i started speaking to sean govard and in will it was in um yeah you know this it's the the progression for me has really come from my sort of men you know from being mentored and and the help on the race days as you because you know you touched on earlier on is i'm not i i there's certain things maybe i'm not as able as other pe people so i have to sort of there's a little bit more prep for myself that, that goes on um yeah and yeah with, with a bit of help from others and we got a really strong sort of family team um yes you know um that's that, one of the things i was going to say sean is that 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 uh and, and i don't know whether you felt this yet paul whether you've been able to get amongst people enough to realize this that uh, the coon paddock is 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 a very very tight-knit group both in its entirety and in terms of pockets even more so and uh and and have, have you been there enough to feel that yet paul no i haven't unfortunately that's the You'll enjoy that. my side of the world you know but um, yeah. no, i definitely definitely want to get in and amongst it it's um yeah you will enjoy that because you'll feel that and and sean i know you and i have had many a conversation is that and and in fact you you're making a key point of it is it's, it's been fundamental to doing it staying doing it and becoming competitive is that you get to learn and, and it's interesting where Paul earlier was saying about that with the, um, you know, the data and how you can actually start sharing it with other drivers. I yeah. think that will happen, won't it? Yeah, I mean, I'd be, I'm very keen to speak to Paul because I've, um, 
the new engine I've got, there's we've got a few little issues we're trying to iron out. Um, and I've used various other bits of software that I just don't understand. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm an electrician by trade, although I'm not you know I'm not anymore. Um, but I'm I haven't got loads of time to spend learning to to read the technology to really understand it. So yeah. what I've been using now is very good from a point of view with the overlays. Um, and I don't know, I don't know, a Garmin I use. I don't know if yeah, yeah, yeah. Saying, yeah but um, yes, yeah, so we use the Garmin and it's really good. But it doesn't show you how to use the layers of information, which I think from what you were saying with having somebody at each race day would be really helpful because you've got the information. It's then somebody actually showing you how to, to use that information for your advantage. Yeah, um, agreed, agreed. And I think that, you know, there'll be a lot of people taking, I think the people that don't use it will probably be the ones that suffer a little bit, if you know what I mean? So that might be the new wave of, you know, how do you get that extra half a second? Um, you know, because being naive, before I started racing, I didn't realise how how important a couple of seconds racing was. You know what I mean? I didn't really give it enough. Fractions you know, of a second, you know. Uh, racing millimetres can mean miles, you know what I mean? So it's crazy, you know. It's um just the tiniest amount of distance or tiniest amount of time can really make a massive difference. Yeah. And, and even in my naivety of not being a racer is that, you know, you hear stories about people throwing thousands, if not tens of thousands, chasing those tents. And it's like, actually, do you know what? For a fraction of that, this, not just the, the, the data, but the presentation of it, the analysis of it, et cetera, for a fraction of the cost and actually but potentially buy you considerably more than that. I mean, I, I've had it where I'm I'm very privileged where I get to commentate on a whole raft of different things, and that includes top level GT racing, like whether it's British GT, GT World Challenge, uh, GT Cup, etc. And I watch pro drivers with AM drivers, let's just call them that, AM drivers. And the pro drivers don't bother working on themselves as much because they're like so close to each other anyway, but they can suddenly gain, you talked about fractions, they can actually gain multiple full seconds for their AM driver by taking the data and getting them to do things that their brain says surely not. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's the beauty of it that I love. And, 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 you know, Sean, I can tell that you're excited by what my my race lab are going to bring to this, and I'm I'm not meaning to sort of almost become a inadvertent salesperson for that. No, but, <laughs> you know, uh, you'll pay me later, I know. Um, but it's it, for me, it's exciting, Sean, and I think you're kind of intrigued by what it can do for you now. Yeah, so I I just quickly say I am um, I was lucky enough to have a um, an invite to go up and spend a day with Janessa, which I spoke to you about. Um, and a, a, a chap by the name of Mike Simpson, you might know him, he's an LM, LMP mm -hmm. driver. Um, and I think yeah. he's the director of something over there now. Um, extremely intelligent man, obviously knows his stuff in, inside out. I spent the day with him in a in a Janetta, in, a, in one of their V6 Janettas, real wheel drive, completely different car to what mine was. Um, made me understand that there is completely different disciplines and you can't just jump from one car to another car. But his level of um, understanding of, the information so what he was able to tell me from from um from his lab and the data and all right some of that data was in his head rather than on a screen to to, to see but he was able to, to coach me a lot more um so i think that's kind of what what i'm saying is to bring that to castle coom at the hot hatch at, at the very bottom end of racing if if you like um will be a massive advantage and it's it's not an expensive advantage whereas a new engine or a new car it yeah. is yeah that's right that's right but Sean, I can tell you're obviously quite a competitive person, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I can imagine you're the sort of person who would drill into that data and really kind of get as much as you can out, um, which is which is amazing. I'm presuming, like, there's because of your competitiveness, do you see yourself ever moving from the hot hatch to the GT or, so, or something else, you know, going forwards once you achieve what you want to achieve? Do you see that kind of progression? And yeah, definitely. Um, I'm I, I toyed with the idea of this year of maybe not moving up a class, um, but I believe I've had the right instruction and and deep down I know it's the right thing. I'm still very, although I'm 44 years old, I'm still very young in the world of racing um, and I've still got a lot to learn about race craft, um, mm. whether that be with data or just, you know, just actually in the car. Um, so in, in answer to your question, yes, I do. I, I've got... I, hence the the janetta conversation I, I i've got this i don't know what it is something in me that i 
I want to race Janetta's. Um, I had a good chat with Colin White, um, and he's sort of, you know, he's sort of helping, helped me sort of change my mindset into eventually I will, it might just be one season. I don't think at the moment I'll ever want to sell my 106. It's such a great little car. Um, it's the work, the work that Will's done to it. Obviously, Will's got 20 years of experience with these cars. You know, he's he's been racing a long time and he's put a lot of effort into my car. And it, it is a fantastic... And the times I'm doing now, I will add that, I've actually beat Will's record this year, which is probably more impressive than driver of the year and winning the chat you know winning the series um you know yeah. you're out now that's it he's not doing anything on your car now <laughs> um yeah um so yeah so yeah i i do i do want to progress i don't want to just stay in the hot hatch forever um i i love the hot hatch um i don't know whether i go in the saloons i don't know i'm not really thought about it, but at the moment my aim is set on the g g g g t's with a janetta whether that be in two years time or three years time right. um and then ultimately i'd like to do a, a season with janetta you know doing their um nice. doing their cir circuits yeah um which i think i'd probably have to and get it only cost you 50 quid remember sean and it's only 50 quid so it's a bargain racing yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah Cheers so, that. Uh, yeah <laughs> i'll always get you out of trouble mate you're fine <laughs> um i mean i know that and I don't know whether we, we just don't touch on this particularly at the moment, but there's challenges that you're trying to have to sort out with regards to being within the regs where you've gone and upgraded to things. How are you getting on with that at the moment? Are you winning that battle? Yeah, I mean, for me, it was it. I haven't got any issues. Um, I'm my car, my car is within regs anyway. Um, it is within regs. Um, there's I've actually got so I've gone up to class class B now. Um, right. so, then, so you've jumped up, yeah. Yeah, so it was a 1598 and now 1648. So it's not a massive jump. Um, Will you but feel that difference? Um, in the test day I had or in the charity day that I took it out, um, yes. Um, really? It's not, it's not quite – basically, I mean, you know what Sean's little AX is, is like. Um, <laughs> yes. And it's, it's the same engine as what – or very similar engine to what Sean's got. Um, so I'm a little bit heavier. Me personally, I'm a little bit heavier. I'm I'm about a foot taller, um, yeah. and, and a foot wider. Um, so yeah, I the car's heavier, but the engine's a little bit newer. So hopefully, I'll you know I'll have a few advantages. Um, look, I I've got a great friend in Sean now, and obviously he's a teammate. But ultimately, I want to be I want to be up alongside him. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't want to be sort of in Will in Sean's shadow forever. I want to be equally as good, and and hopefully one day beat them maybe. Well, um, and and in fairness, in that class, I have to put a shout out to Jeff Ryle was looking incredibly quick last year, wasn't he as well? Yeah, yeah. I mean, me and me and Jeff, since I was the class below, we had some close yeah. battles, but he had the he did have the legs on, on on me. Um, unless unless he had something wrong with the car, which I think happened twice, and then he had the accident um, when his when his wheel something broke on the back, <laughs> um, which is pretty hairy. Um, I so I did. I probably we probably. 50 50 last season um but that was probably more due to his error rather than yeah rather than my car so um, it just means three of you battling out is going to be incredible to watch would, it won't be sean in the class unfortunately sean's in oh, really um yeah oh. so um i don't know who else oh, will be in yeah. class, class, class be. it might only be i i don't know i, I haven't seen who's entering you'll, um, at, you'll still be fighting anyway that's the, on the track let's be honest <laughs> yeah ultimately yeah i mean i you know i don't yeah i don't it's like i said it right at the start it's, it's weird because i almost don't the classes they do come into it, obviously but i almost you set you, you know you want to be first second third overall yeah. you know that's where you want to try and try and be um of course yeah nice. well uh, just quickly to to put is he had the likes of tim perry from the orange army hey sean good to see you uh darren duffield says hello Hi, sean uh gary franks fresh from his ice uh driving hi sean hey, uh, ben pemberton it'd be good to see him back again he was getting quicker how do everyone looking forward to returning to racing the hot hats championship this season um <clears throat> tim perry's gone now so he wouldn't have seen that anyway but if you watch it back you'll see it but he says good luck to you this year and jake olden says time for some fun sean deacon so <laughs> Oh yeah, so yeah, I forgot to mention that. So he's got my engine from last season. Oh, I did know that. I'd forgotten that. Yeah, and he is. Yeah, I mean, I think you. Yeah, I think in Class C, it's probably 
same with class D. There's not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of cars that enter in class D, so it's probably a little bit easier to to get more wins. Um, at least okay. get more silverware. So um, I'm not saying that that's why he might get on better, but with the engine he's going to have this year and what I've seen in the car already, yeah, we're go- I'm gonna, we're we're all go- it's going to be close. Hopefully, it's all going to be close. Yeah, I like the sound of that. Jake's yeah. a young driver that's always been sort of like uh, if we can see a full season out of him, he's always going to be there or thereabouts. So I hope yeah. that that's what we get to see above all. Uh, let's not forget the less when there's not enough cars in there, you don't tend to get full points. So that you know it does backfire yeah. on that sense as well. So it kind of works itself out normally in that uh, in that roundabout way. Uh, Paul, any more questions? No, no. Well, in which case, Sean, I, you know, I've got to wrap that one up by saying congratulations, much. man. Brought awesome year again from you. I look forward to seeing the new car, the new engine, the new speed, the new people to fight with, all that sort of stuff. Um, and it's it's the new cha- new first year of it being actually a championship. Yeah. And uh, and I wish you the best of luck, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks for having, having me on. We'll speak soon. Any yeah, shout you. outs that you want to do? Obviously, yeah. To all my, I'm very lucky to have five five sponsors, and I've managed to retain all five sponsors this year. So thank you very much. I, I won't name them all. Obviously, Team Waz. Everyone associated with Team Waz. My my right hand man, Nick. I think you've met. You've obviously met Nick. Yeah. Um, I can't. My wife and my kids. You know, without their support, I wouldn't be doing it. Like I like a lot of pe- people. Um, very blessed to better race. You know, it's not a cheap sport. Um, and it yeah. is fifty quid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so just thank everybody who's who's helped out along the way. And it's yeah, like you said on it's it's a fantastic family, it's a fantastic place to race, and I highly recommend anybody who wants to get into um you know uh racing. This is definitely the hot hatch is, is the way it's the way forward. Bless you, my friend. I love oh. hearing that and I look forward to seeing you at the circuit, mate. Uh Ben says, Well done last season, Sean. Good to see how you get on in 2024. So best of luck, mate. I'll see you at the circuit. Thank you very much. Take care. Cheers, bud. So that was uh, our hot hatch champion. We've already seen the single seater. It means that we're now, uh, and I need to double check because I've gone on longer. If you do need to go to the loo, by the way, Paul, I forgot to say this. Feel free to go and I can pop you down in the green room. But no, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll do that on live on air, mate. You know, just, yeah, just. Yeah. <laughs> but now oh, we're okay. going for the saloon car champion. And this was lovely that to see this because I know this guy has been like gunning for this for some time. He gets to race with his dad and everything else as well. And it was just quite an emotional victory. So let's bring out Mike Good. <laughs> Mr. Good. Good evening. How are we? Boy band, as I affectionately know him. <laughs> How are you, my friend? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you for your patience there, mate. I know that we were sort of playing with what your commitment Oh, there, I was going to say, I was, I was trying to text you at the same time because I couldn't get the link. And then <laughs> trying to put the kids to bed. I know, I know. We got that's like I was having to text you whilst I was live on air, mate. You think that was hard, crikey? But we pulled it off. But Mike, I mean, I think I summed that up quite well there, didn't I? Because this that was an emotional championship win for you because you've been not only gunning for this for a while, but close more than once as well. Yeah, so I've raced class D now for what, eight, eight, nine years, roughly. Uh, I think two thousand and fifteen was my first year. Um, and yeah, I've had the our most unreliable car being that Lupo. <laughs> um, then obviously, then we bought the 106, which I bought for dad, which I spent more time in. And then we sold that. And obviously, I bought the Corsa, and, and that then, was uh, Russell Pointer Brown's that's correct, championship yes. winning Corsa, wasn't it? It was, yes. Yeah. So obviously, that car's yeah. been around years before I owned it, yeah. Um, so obviously, everyone knew the pedigree of that car. Um, and then obviously then dad took on the Lupo, which is even more unreliable than I had it. Um, and then obviously ended up with his Fiesta as he got now. Yes. Yeah. And that was one of the, I mean, obviously we'll go more on to your own actual championship winning season, but you adored, was it the last race weekend that you and he just ended up having this great battle together? Was, was that legitimate or were you playing? What, between me and dad? Yeah. Um, it's a bit of a play at the same time. Um, obviously, 
we were trying to work out the point system because we knew that dad's points were close enough to be second in yes. the class champion. Um, but we were trying to sort of stay very close on track because we've never really had any pitches either together on track. Of course, yeah, so yeah. We were trying to do it to obviously have the memories of the cars being taken on the track as well as trying to have a bit of fun. But obviously we don't have fun together because it's either dad tries to take me out or I end up taking him out by mistake. So, yeah, it's, uh, it does get quite interesting on that track, that's for sure. And for those of you who don't know, because I'm going to take this, I hope you don't mind, Mike, I'm going to take the opportunity of, of just saying that uh, his dad, Roger Good, that you'll remember in the Yellow Fiesta, for those of you that are spectating there, he is an absolute legend because he's an RNLI uh, boatman as well, isn't he? That's correct, yeah. Absolute hero. And I mean, the, the stuff that he did, um, was it last year that he went and did all yeah, the Yeah, he did a big climb, climb, yeah, to raise money. I mean, so, unbelievable. Not, not for a past 60 year old man climbing a mountain. So I'll give him that. Yeah, exactly. Right. And and he just loves his race and he loves being about. You can see it all the time, can't you? He was the one that got me into it. So obviously he's marshaled for years and still marshals at Coombe. Okay. Um, so when he's not racing, he's marshalling like the autumn classics and stuff like that. Um, so he got me into it at 14. So I used to do the paddock at the age of 14. Um, then at 16, I was allowed out on the bank, but I wasn't allowed to jump out onto the live track. Um, I did that for a few years and then I got the bug too much to want to race. <laughs> so, and it, the, what that did it for me is like Kieran Simmons and stuff like that. I watched them while I was marshalling and thought, well, I could do that. And then here we are now. And obviously that small world of we're all best, like, really good friends now. Yeah, exactly. And in fact, I call you and uh, Kieran the, the boy band, as in you two when you're out there are the boy band. I was going to say, it doesn't change. It's, I spend more time waving to him than we do actually racing. <laughs> I love it. And if it isn't that, we then get you printing T-shirts with, uh, I forget what the three names that were on. Oh, the that, was, that was uh, Waterman, Kipo and Good Slitters. <laughs> <laughs> it was, because <laughs> basically I just turned around. I should have put it on tonight, really. <laughs> Waterman, Kipo. What was it? Waterman, Kipo and? And Good Slitters. And good, of course, you. I forgot that part, yeah. Uh, dodgy firm of solicitors, if ever there was one, as I said, those two together because it did sound like that. And I didn't realize that I got to be careful, I forget that you guys do end up hearing about this afterwards. So, well, it, it was Keeper that texted me and said that you'd said it, so let's make some t shirts. And that was it, then. I thought well, this is game, I had to make something for it. See, that's a problem, Paul, just so you know. I think I'm safe up in the commentary box. They're racing, they got their helmets on, they can't hear, but they get told this stuff afterwards, so I have to be very <laughs> careful what I say. I, I say that, Mike. I'm never careful, actually, to be fair, am I? So, no, no, I got to say, I don't think you've ever been careful, have you? No, it's all <laughs> You know it, you know it. Uh, Nathan Sutton, your good friend, says, smile, Grumpy. He is now, Nathan. He's smiling now. You're it's all right. because Nathan told me to smile. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nick Mizzen, another one that obviously races an awful lot with us. He says evening to us as well. So it's great to see uh, people coming out. So take us to the year because, I mean, you've been there or there. I am right in saying it's more than once you've been close, aren't I? Yeah, so I've won, I've won the class a few times. Yeah. And then 2017, I got pit by Simon Norris. Right. And that was a couple of points in. I beat Gary by a point because Gary ended up third. But that was the closest I've been. But And then when I've been close in the class, I've had a problem. Or we haven't uh, had numbers. Of course, so, which is what I was saying earlier, wasn't it? Yeah. With George saying that when the numbers are low in the class, you don't get full points. But it's one reason why Dad dropped down into Class D, because obviously we didn't have enough numbers. So it was jeopardising the point system. So Dad switched his engine out into a 1400. Oh, really? Um, dropped down the class, yeah. I say, so I say he dropped down the class to help me, more like to try and beat me, but it didn't happen. Well, oh, no, I like your romantic notion, mate. That's what I'm, I'm loving that one. That's really good. Um, oh, and I'm just going to quickly shout out because Sean Deacon, bless him. I've got it, Sean. Thanks, mate. He said, forgot to shout out to Cat and Shirl, uh, if you can fit that in somewhere. Done. So Sean Deacon shouts out to Cat and Shirl as well. Uh, it's, he's, he's creeping now, isn't he, good? He's, he's, he's keep creeping now. <laughs> he's keeping oh, himself creeping, mate. Yeah. So, Mike, you obviously uh, you've done a great last year. Going into this year, 
has that changed your mindset in any way? Is it giving you kind of extra confidence to go in and go, I'm going to win it again? Or like, you know, if, if, has that changed anything pre-season? Um, well, I had the mindset of not racing this year. Oh, really? So I sort of ticked that box I've of done it, so I'm out. <laughs> but the more the car sat there in the workshop, the more I thought, well, I can't just leave it. So oh, you've got to come back. And, and then dad's got a new engine for this year. So it I gave see. me more ammo to try and beat him again. So, <laughs> nice. I, and so, yeah. I was trying to work out from those social posts actually whether it was that you were just going to get the car refreshed or whether you were changing to a different car. So you, your plan is the course is still. Yeah. So I toyed with a completely different engine. So I toyed with the two litre and switched into hot hatch. Blimey. Okay. So it would have seen what two hundred and forty ish horsepower out of it, maybe a bit more than that. In, Obviously, in I'm a... not far off that now. But in a in a in a roller skate of a car, you know, it's a tiny yeah, little thing. Isn't it? Wow, that's so mad. Weighing in at what just over seven hundred kilos. So and at the moment, I can't say too much of the figures because obviously everyone's listening. But <laughs> yeah. they're quite a pretty number of figures that I can get out of the car as everyone sees the car, how, how fast it is. So, do you use um, data at all during your season to to help or? So again, sorry. Do you use data at all during the season to help you, or is, is do you know what? what? I've never used it all the years. Really? Yeah. So this is I your just... secret weapon then, right? Is that you want to beat your dad. Don't tell him anything about it. Yeah. You go basically. On race lab and that gives you an extra, extra bit of. Um... All, all I ever use is the pit board to see my really? time going around. Yeah. I've never, I've, I've done it once on a test day where I've checked my data to try and find some time. Yeah. But that was only ever time I used it. And that was when I first bought my car six yeah, years yeah. ago. Do you fancy it now, Mike? I mean, you've been listening, uh, hopefully, if you haven't watched back the beginning when you were busy putting little to bed and everything, is that the beauty with my race lab is that it is all about this, take the data, the you know, they've mapped the circuit, the lines, you take it from your ECU, all this sort of stuff, uh, and, and find those bits and pieces. Do you fancy, now that you've won the championship, is that kind of like, actually, do you know what? I want to play and see what more I can do now. I want to try and get a lap record. Because yeah, right. So I know, I know. Obviously, me and Ant have been very close, and Ant and I, uh, stupid amounts of time between us. It was like a seventeen four that Ant did, and I did a seventeen five. Um, so we are extremely close to the point now that, obviously, with the data, I reckon that if I play around with a few bits, I reckon I can get. I would like to get in the sixteens, and the car's been well, the car's been sent off to have the engine checked over, refreshed, the gearbox done. So there is no reason why. I shouldn't be able to, with a bit of tweaking and data and checking where I'm going wrong, that I can't sort of pip that lap record, which is what I'm going to try for this year. Yeah, and that's a beautiful thing about da- about the data, right? Is that you can you can not only look at the, the car data and go, hey, what's what's working really well when it comes to setup or so forth for the track, but also with your actual racing data to go, do you know what? You know, this is the best sector one I've done, um, and these are the lines I've taken, or this is how I've done it. So you know. Bring it because because one thing we can do is kind of show you optimal lap. So take all of those mini sectors around the track and go. If you strung all them together, you could actually achieve a a sixteen point nine. Um, but your best lap so far is a seventeen point four. So it's a half a second in it, and this is how you could do it. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say that's it, and that's that's probably what I need. Yeah, to sort of find that small little gap, but it's enough to like you say to find that point of a second or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. going to be there somewhere to find. With just yeah. a few tweaks. And and here's an interesting point. And apologies to Daniel Williams, because I missed this one earlier, but he's just put another message and it reminded me this one is that Daniel said earlier, even though I'm looking forward to seeing everyone old and new at the media day, will my race lab be there? So uh, uh Paul, a question for you. You know, yes, the media day hundred percent. So we're gonna have we're gonna try and have a good presence at the media day. Um looks a great opportunity for us to show you guys what the app can do and get you ready for the season. Um, and again, yeah, like, like I say, media day and, and test days, definitely we want to be there for good presence. Um, I don't want to have to annoy you guys on race weekends because you, you're busy and um, all the rest of it. But um, yeah, no, we'll be there. So definitely come see us and um, we'll show you what it's about. I, I will pick up on that a second, actually, Paul. Um, and it might be that it's just an immovable thing is that listening to some of these guys is that in the early stages is that could someone be there on race days because i get your point about not troubling them but whilst they're trying to get used to what they're looking at interpreting it and how they can use it 
will anybody or could anyone be there on race days? Yeah, it's definitely something we can look at. We, I suppose, from a from our point of view, we didn't want to, yeah, uh, I suppose, yeah, intrude right. on, on on people focusing on, on what they've got to do that weekend. But um, look, if, if there's an appetite for us to be there and actually to to be there support. Yeah, 100%. Like and, and I might be speaking out of turn there, Paul, because it might not be, but I was just there thinking literally, you know, a few of them have sort of said that while we're getting used to understanding and using and getting the benefit from it is that maybe it wouldn't be intruding. Yeah, no, 100%. Like, I'm really open to that. And I think also, you know, uh, not that I want to promise anything, but they're, they're, I'm open to doing um, other stuff as well, like so maybe something like this every month where we can have a sit down and actually talk about my race lab and how to get the best out of the app. So... And bring in drivers and, and get their experiences of it, you know. So, I wish I you and I had thought about that before, Paul. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but that's really interesting. So, like, I want to see Mike get a lap record, and then you know we can we can do a big um, show around it because I think genuinely that that is exciting and and that's what we want to see. We want to see people take half a second off their lap, and Mike go, "Yeah, I, I got into the 16s and beat everyone." Like that's epic. Well, uh, there's a question for you, Mike, right? No if pressure. Up, if there's you, no pressure, you end, Mike. You've got to do it this year, okay? Uh, but if you end up going for something like My Race Lab and you, it does make a difference, uh, Paul and I are in discussions about possibly, as you heard there, is about doing doing shows on a regular basis, My yeah. Race Lab shows. Would you come on as a guest to be able to turn around yeah. and say, look, seriously, guys, I used it and I've got a lap record or whatever? Oh, well, 100%, yeah, because it, it, just, it just shows, doesn't it? It proves what you can yeah. do from it. And I, I, I reckon... If I was to use it, and I will use it, that we'll see what we can gain from it. And I, like you said, Paul, I think we're going to find sectors that are different to others, and we're going to put them all together and find that small bit of a gap. But it's that, like we, we always say in racing, obviously, a second is massive. Yeah. So you yeah. find anything from there, you, you're laughing. So. Yeah. Yeah. And and Sean, I can still see you in the background. Thumbs up. Are you up for coming on if you end up using it? Yep. So there's another one, Paul, that will yeah. come on if you know, using it and able to get those benefits. So that's that's great because for you, Paul, you want these real-life scenarios, don't you? Oh, 100%. That's what it's all about. And like I said to you earlier, it, we are focused on the real life. So, um, you know, I want to have every kind of journey, whether it be someone just starting out and thinking, hey, I could never have done this and then progressing, or whether it be someone who's already, you know, a championship winner but achieving – the next step which is either a lap record or knocking half a sec half a second off their lap you know to yeah. me that that's a win for everybody right so yeah i want the kind of whole spectrum if you like of of the beginners all the way through to the championship winners you know i think it's great everyone's going to have their own personalized journey which is awesome and that's the point and i'm sure everybody that's watching that might isn't necessarily the racing drivers is that you're with me is the fact that i just love hearing these stories because it's dead cool by the way another one i missed earlier apologies dave uh dave baggy malpass hi all glad everyone survived the storms don't speak to about those i've got expense with fence panels gone um uh and are ready for the new season all the ups downs spills and thrills and all that the track has to offer no one can say what is going to happen race by race that's what i like about the circuit hashtag orange army I love that. I did mean to read that one out. I hope you're still there, Dave, uh, because I love that one because it really is genuinely true. Uh, in terms of what reminded me, by the way, uh, and this is back to you, Mike, is that what reminded me that Daniel Williams has sent a message earlier is that he also said, no, Mike, tell us everything about your car. We won't take notes honest. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Dan would want to know his secrets after being in that yeah, track, so. Exactly, he would, he would. <laughs> Uh, Bill Badger Brockbank, and I'm looking forward to seeing his new car out next year. That's going to be wicked. He says, what is my race lab and how can I see or use it? Um, instead of just saying, Bill, watch the beginning of the show, I'm going to just do a quick summary of it again, is that you can go to, let me put it back up again because I put it here, myracelab.com. And Paul, remind us, they can actually get a trial version of this as well. But just a very quick synopsis. What is it? Yeah, so look, you can go to myracelab.com, you can go on the Apple Store or Google Play and search for My Race Lab, download it for free. But the idea behind it is that we take all your, your data sources, so whether that be ECU, GoPro, um, digital dashes like an AIM dash, whatever it might be, uh, we can bring that into My Race Lab and then um, without needing to have 10 years of training in a degree, you can actually read that data and um, see your racing lines, compare laps, look at your optimal lap, like we just talked about with Mike, um, and even sh can even um, share your lap with someone else. So, you know, if Mike's battling for a lap record with someone else, 
Um, they can either hide their data for, away from each other, or they can even collaborate and go, look, one of us is going to get it. So, um, yeah, share your data, share it with a coach, share it with other drivers. It's completely up to you. But um, it's uh, it's modern, new, and pretty awesome. Uh, what I love is, and again, this is just taking it for your website, the bit that got me, it says, My Race Lab offers actionable insights and is designed to grow with you, playing a critical role in helping you achieve your goals from local meets to national series titles. It's your front seat race engineer for career success and vehicle progression. So yeah. driver and vehicle. So I know I've just read that, but that was the thing that got me, is that I that excited, the because I had nothing to do with the link up between you guys and, and Castle Coon. You're the title sponsor of Castle Coon Race racing club uh and and that i was like okay what's this about and I had a look and i went this is cool this is really exciting that's me sort of fanboying but turn it back to mike good so we've we've yep. ra- waxed lyrical about all of that mike and and i can tell it's the kind of thing that it certainly excites sean and 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 i can imagine that that be uh, interesting for you but now let's flick back mike to to your season when you went into the year did you kind of sit there kind of going this is it or was it at that initially just another season let's see how we get going well obviously the first race we were down on numbers so it started off obviously a great great first race because obviously won the race but due to the numbers obviously our points got deducted obviously so you going into the first round thinking well i've got the, i've got the fastest lap and i've got the win but we're still behind and obviously i think every every race we were doing we were having issues because obviously with numbers so it was always, I think Mark White was always one or two points ahead of me mm. most races. So yeah, it was just like... But people that don't understand what we're talking about there is that instead of getting 10 points for the win, Mike was getting nine points for That's the win. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, that and was the that. two races on that opening weekend in April is that, yeah, you got the wins, but you kind of just ebbed, you know, it was, it was just dripping away a little bit already. Yeah, so it was it? always one point between me and Mark, so obviously I was getting the nine plus the one for the fastest, but Mark was getting ten plus one, so it was always the one point difference, so obviously the double header to start with, obviously Mark was only two points ahead, even though we both won our class and got the fastest lap. Um, so I kind of kept pushing, thinking well, all it takes is one mistake. Yep. And it's, and obviously we, we both have our cars built by the same person, so we both know Oh really? Um, yeah, so Russell builds both our cars. Um through and through. So yeah. So that's Russell Humphrey, isn't it? That that's one. great, yeah. yeah. So you'll notice this year the car's undergone quite a few transformations, including my sponsor this year is Inset Racing. So I'm running oh, back okay. under Russell's name this year, yeah. So, I love Russell and his family. They're they're just absolute hardcore race fans, aren't they, as well? I love that. Well, Russell Wait. Russell and Debbie have always been there for the car. So every time I've had an issue, he's gone straight back to Russell and he's rectified it straight away. So I I, I can't ever fault them. And they've been absolutely brilliant all the years that they've supported the car. And touch wood, I've never really had an issue. Obviously, I can't talk the last race because obviously I broke a drive shaft. But Well, what I will put up though, Kai Barker said that your car was more reliable than your van last season. (laughs) That, that one, I'll never lose that. Four engines in two years I've had. <laughs> Just so you know, Paul, that's his, his van that tows the car up, is that we've had people <laughs> having to rescue his race car and draw, and him to get into the circuit. <laughs> I've had to hire vehicles. I've had to beg and borrow vehicles. <laughs> Just to get the race car there. <laughs> Crazy. Kai put it, not me. I might have chosen to put that up, but shoot Kai rather than me on but that. But just, right. just tell Kai that Dad's raced for two seasons on a 50-pound engine, more than Kai can do. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a real 50-pound or a Sean Deacon 50-pound? Yeah, no, that's, that's a real 50-pound. So I pulled, I pulled a, um, a car out of the bush, 50-pound, I paid for it. Really? And the engine sat in the workshop, which the engine Dad needed. And he used it for two seasons and then dropped down to the 1400 which he paid 180 pounds for the engine and that's still going strong obviously wow. it's completely standard but he's yeah that's the car or the engine he's been using and so. i've always thought and and it's one of the things when i host like the castle coon racing school and things like that is that it, it the speed is all relative isn't it because it always feels crazy quick when you're in it anyway you know, you could go quicker and quicker and quicker, but it still feels quick in a car. I mean, I commentate, amongst many other things, on the uh, Enduro KAs, the Ford KAs or Ford cars or whatever we're supposed to call them. 
Yeah. It, absolutely. It's the one thing that's more likely to get me to go and get a race license to actually occasionally dip into something like that. I worry because being a commentator, I'll have a target on my back. I have no <laughs> doubt. But because you get pro drivers that are racing incredible things, jumping out. And when I'm interviewing them, they've got the biggest smile on their face because the speed is all relative, isn't it? It's the same as a C1 championship. That's yeah. always interested me as well. It's it's down to the driver, but everybody you speak to who've done the KA or the C1, it's all for fun. It's all a Absolutely. great laugh. And it still feels quick when you're in it. That's the beauty, isn't it? So that, that's, that's what... it. Like you can compare, you can go 200 mile an hour on a track, or you can do 100 mile an hour on a track, and it's you still can get the same sort of buzz. But if yeah. you're all in the same sort of car doing the same speed, it's that's where it becomes really good fun. And that's what I'm trying to do for this year is trying to find a drive in the C1s. Yes. So that's what I've, I've always wanted to do it, but it's just trying to find logistics of being able to do it all. But I'm hoping this year I can pull that sort of thing off. It's worth it, definitely. I've, I've opened a can of worms, though. Gary Frank's now said, race license, Dorsey, do it. I'm it's about honestly, time you got a race license. I know, I'm very, very close. I'll be rubbish, I have no doubt about it, but I'll have a bloody good time doing <laughs> it. That's the thing. And he says, we can test you in one of our minis. Hell, I don't think I'll be able to pedal those things quite as quick, but I definitely fancy giving it a crack. But so first two races, the first weekend, doubleheader, nine points for the win, but then suddenly 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Uh, and it looks like October. Was that a DNF or a DNS? Did you not? Uh, well, I, I got about three yards out of the pit lane before drive shafts now. That's right. Yes, I do remember now. Yeah, so I thought I thought I had clutch issues, which is why I started from the pit lane. Um, so I tried to take it nice and steady off the line, but, yeah, the drive shaft just completely exploded. So, yeah, I, I didn't even get to the yellow line of the actual track. At that point, take us to the emotions. I mean, were you starting to go, is this the championship ebbing away now, or were you relaxed well, I, about it? I think we worked it to be in August that I clenched it by a point. Oh, really? So October was a bit of sort of, yeah, because we had the drop scores as well. It was sort of a an open, do we go for it, do we not? Because I really told with not racing. Of course, yeah. But it was, I wanted to keep the numbers up in the class because obviously, especially with dad trying to fight for second in class. Um, so we said, well, go out anyway. And obviously, yeah, I had the jar shaft issue in the first race. Well, I had an issue in the qualifying. Um, as I was racing, my whole dash just turned off. And it turned out the bulb had fallen out the back of the dash and actually <laughs> arced itself out and took the fuse out. So it just turned all my dash off. So I had to pull off for that. But pulling off over quarry, I think, disturbed the drive shaft, which then obviously caused me to break it in the race. Oh, Christ. Okay. So, yeah. I mean, this is where those. it's... It's intriguing, though, is that if you look at the final figures after the drop scores, is that you won over uh, Mark Wyatt by two points. Yeah. But, yeah, that had kind of worked itself out a little bit earlier. But The thing that gave me a bit of a head start was Mark having a drive shaft issue. So he broke a drive shaft in... July. Yeah. Yeah. So that caused him a DNF, which gave me the sort of head start a little bit against me. I know we had the drop scores still available. Well, Andy, a... and he missed out uh, the August rounds. He came second to Simon, Simon Norris. Norris. Yeah. See, so that, isn't it that funny helps. how things go back round? You said yeah. that you missed out by, what did you say, two points to Simon Thornton Norris. That's it, yeah. Him rocking up doing that helped your championship push. I was going to say, I paid him some money, and I joke, didn't really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's it. It's it's that's how it works in racing. We yes, okay, sometimes you would say it's a bit of unfair because obviously it's coming halfway through the season, but not everyone's got a car ready and no one's got the availability sometimes to race. Yeah. So that's what happened with Sai. He was obviously really busy, brought the car out, blow some cobwebs, and in return that actually did me a favour. It, it could have gone both ways. I could have had issues that day, but it it sort of the car stayed very reliable all season, which sort of is the key in Coon. I've always said that. Reliability yeah. wins overall. Which, it always which has is been. the big challenge with the Class A cars, because they're like crazy powerful, so fast, so powerful, but they can be fairly precious at times as well, because they're so highly strung. Yeah, and that, that's it. And like I've spoken to Gary and Adam quite a few times, and mm. obviously Adam has his car built by Russell as well. So all three of us are in the same boat, but obviously Adam's pushing serious power. And 
I've always said, yes, if you've got the budget, it's great to run in class A, but because of how tuned you've got to have your vehicle, that's where they go wrong. And yeah, you, you, well, you're talking him winning, the, him winning the title last year was like the first class A for ages that had won the outright title. So, it, you know, it, it shows how difficult it is in that class. Yeah, and that's it. And you you look at the speed difference as well, so you can see why the cars are breaking more than what, say, my car would be. Mm. Like they're sort of four times maybe my power of what I've got. So okay, mine's strong to as best it can be, but theirs are really strong to the point that the heads lift off. So it's exactly. yeah, it's it's insane power that they are pushing, but what a show they put on. Oh, they do. I mean, we, we we couldn't live without them because they are so entertaining, but they're bonkers at the same price. Yeah. Um, and that's what I love about the the saloon cars. And, and again, uh, Paul, I don't know how much you've seen of them, is that we get this wonderfully eclectic mix of the different classes. And I have a hell of a job because the commentary, it's multiple races within yeah. a race. And, and, and it's just so entertaining to, to kind of see that where they're all mixing up. And they're just so immaculately presented as well. That's awesome. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, and I'm, again, I'm making sure you come back, by the way, in case you hadn't noticed. I'm making no, sure. No, no, I, I, I appreciate you. that because I want to. I want to be there. Good. I'm glad to hear that. I'm glad to hear that. Mike, so you then got the championship sewn up. I mean, you, you, you were pretty sure you got it. I mean, there, there's an interesting one then for me to go with you is that you believe that you had probably sewn it up in August. You, your wording that you use there is that did that allow you to celebrate then or was it just still restrained? It was a drop score thing that worried me. I wasn't too sure on how we were working it. So obviously I tried speaking to Kat, but I think we were all a bit unsure. So <laughs> yeah. it was... Is it, is it not? And then we were doing our maths on our WhatsApp group and I was like, I'm pretty sure I've got it by a point. But we didn't want to say anything just in case it wasn't. So we said, oh, we'll race it anyway. Yeah. And yeah, it was. It was a point. But I didn't celebrate in August. I thought, well, I'll wait. Just to, I didn't. I know what happened. I'll celebrate too early and turn out I was a point behind rather oh, than a point ahead. Which would be brutal, wouldn't it? It would yeah, be brutal. So. so the celebrations, both internally and externally, stayed until that fight, the grand finals meeting in October. Now, take us to what that felt like. Oh, it's well. I thought obviously that first race that like, it would be that oh I've got this and I've got the championship, but obviously rather than actually <laughs> going the track, I saw it from the side of the track. So yeah, it was I knew I'd got it, but that moment changed because I know I knew I'd won the championship. It was Dad's ever first win, so he had his oh, first ever win throughout his whole season um, that race. So it was. That opened up, not the emotions, but it opened up the the memories because it was, well, not only did I know I'd won that championship, but then dad had his first ever win. So that meant a lot to him. Yeah. Um, and he secured his second place. So going into that second race, because obviously we had a double header, it was the emotions were high because, yes, I'd finished that race. I got the championship. Dad had secured second. And we sort of crossed the line together, knowing that, that memory had been made of the father and son one, two in the class, which I don't know if it's ever been happened before, but yeah, yeah I'm not, really I'm not sure. moment, you know? it, it really was poor. I mean, we were there sort of like talking about it on, on the comms and, and they played with each other on the circuit, dad and son together with each other. And it, and it was special. And, and it is a dad and son that have been there racing for a good time. And, you know, I keep forgetting the fact that, of course, that history goes back even further with the marshalling and everything is that it, it means a lot. And and again, and I hope that this is something that you're aware of, uh, Paul, at Castle Coombe, is that it that both sides of the fence is incredibly tight. That's the race is obviously trackside, the marshals sort of both sides, and then the spectators is that it's, it's, I mean, Mike, am I right in saying this? It is an extreme family, isn't it? Both sides of the fence. Oh, it's, it's family all around. Like, I've got very good friends with some of the fans, like Stuart Taylor. Obviously, he watched yeah. at the time. I got very close with Stuart to the point that his wife offered me round for dinner when we come up on the weekends. And 
then obviously I got close with the marshals and then I'm still close to some of the marshals like Dave in the paddock and stuff like that. Very close with them. And then you go into the races and then like Willow, obviously my youngest, one of well, two of the races, one being Craig Wright, who doesn't race for us anymore. And Anne Weeks are both godfathers to my youngest. So it's the whole family of not just you racing your friends, but it's the sort of spectators get involved in, I don't know. I've never, I've never raced anywhere else that has that sort of whole there atmosphere isn't. built in together. They, don't get me wrong. I ha, I'm very lucky where, you know, plenty of the circuits have like wonderful atmospheres, Alton Park, Brands Hatch. They have lots of people that really, really care, but there just is nothing like Castle Coon for the, for the fam, which I guess, Mike, in reality, that's where Coon TV was born from, wasn't it? Was that when we yeah, went to that lock, lockdown and everyone went, what the heck is this lockdown nonsense? I was going to say, yeah. And we got the and camera was, on the track as well, didn't we? So we could all watch it live. We did that as well. That yeah. was the progress, absolutely, because obviously we could only have so many people there. Uh, and that kind of sums it up. And and Paul, and just in case you didn't know that about Coombe, that's and hopefully you can feel it through even through this show, is that oh, it's absolutely. a big, big deal. And, and the reason why I brought it up at that moment is that that was the point, Mike, wasn't it? That, fine, you're out, but you're now on the sideline watching your dad get the first win. Emotional for you. You can probably feel the emotions coming over the commentary, coming from the spectator banks, coming from the marshals, I suppose, because everybody gets it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. And it's, the emotions are extremely high, but it's everyone's got the same passion to be there. And that's what I've always found with Kim. It's, it's what's always drawn me back to wanting to race again. Like I could quite easily sit out for a season and watch, but it, it draws you back in every time. And it's you, you would regret it, wouldn't you? Because knowing I you, you'd would, like, probably come and watch, but then you'd go, no, I need to be there. <laughs> well, I, I took a year out, obviously, when COVID first hit, because I was so unsure. Yeah. Um, well, hang on, two seconds. And um, yeah, so I took a year out and I come up and watched. Well, I tried to watch and then I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> and then I wouldn't come to the track. So I was like, if I don't come to the track, then I won't miss it. But I still did. And that was it. Then I come back out. That's what we love, mate. That's why we keep drawing you back in again. Nick Mizzen says uh, his two outings obviously helped as well. <laughs> it always has when Nick comes out to help me. <laughs> I love Nick. I absolutely adore Nick, and it's a, another wonderful story, isn't it? And Nick's another one that obviously went through his uh, his challenges with losing his wife, and uh, and he always said that the family Coom helped him through it as well. And and Paul Bird, you mentioned was it you that mentioned Paul Bird earlier? It was, wasn't no, it? I think Sean did. Oh, was it Sean? Sorry, oh, yeah. yeah, it was Sean. Yeah, they mentioned Paul Bird. That was another one that, you know, again, helped with uh, with with the Coombe t- uh, But family. it's the same as this year, wasn't it, when we lost, or last year, say, no, when we lost Mark. Obviously, Mark yes. being a big part of our, our little group. Absolutely. Um, sort of took us back. Well, it knocked us for 10, really. It was not something we ever thought would happen. And then obviously... Because no, it was out of the blue, wasn't it? Totally out of the blue, that one, wasn't yeah, it? And, and it, you it, and Nath were like, clearly, you, you've you done a lot of things together racing in his honour, haven't you? Yeah, that's it. Obviously, I was close with Nath anyway before, um, but this sort of brought us really close um, mm. to the point that well, I say we're building a car, we're slowly, will build a car um, from the engine that Mark had in the Astra, one that Nath uh, crashed. Yeah, so yeah. we've got that engine, which we're turning into... Believe it or not, a course to be van, um, which, do, will, yeah. which will be seen at some point at Coombe. But it's, yeah, so that's what we're building together in sort of memory of Mark. So we painted it. in the same colors of Mark's car. Um, the, the it, yeah, sort of lime green and yellow and all of that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's it's something that we're building together because it, it's sort of, I don't know, res- respect for Mark at the same time. Obviously, he was a big part of the saloons. Obviously, yeah. he was an ex champion as well. And the friendship was massive there, and obviously it still is now. Obviously, Nate put his eyes up. He knows exactly what we're building, which Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> <laughs> I look forward to it. I know I do, and and yeah, I, I, I miss Mark hugely, and I love the family. The Sutton family is uh, they're just adorable, and 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 just love that they're still coming up. Is because they could have just disappeared away, couldn't they? And, and it well, that's what we did with Caroline and Leanne. Obviously, we all yeah. chipped in together to get their passes um, yeah. to make so sure nice. they're still coming back. So it was, yeah, just a show of respect. Them. 
And Caroline mentioned earlier, Nathan's obviously watching, is that they're still absolutely hooked. And that's that family coom. And I mean, on that note, I think that kind of sums it up beautifully in, in fairness, Mike, is that, you know, congratulations on the championship. You did it, my friend. You were the, the 2023 saloon car champion. Still sound good? It does, yeah. I've got to do it again, though, I've got to try and get it again. Yeah. Do it. Go for it. Enjoy it, mate. We look forward to seeing you back there. You'll miss it. We'll have some good fun as well. There's no doubt about it. You've now got the uh, the potential to have a bit of new fun as well with uh, with data and everything else that you can play around with. Uh, sorry, mate, I've stitched you up, Mike, haven't I, of making you sort of go and spend a little bit more money. But <laughs> it sounds fun to me, so, uh, so enjoy it. It does sound fun, and that's what I look forward to. It's, it's something exactly. I definitely want to look into, so yeah. I like it. Mike, congratulations on being the champion. Uh, any shout-outs you want to give? I just want to shout out to obviously Inset Racing for building me that monster of a car. Obviously, didn't break at all all year apart from the drive shaft, which is my issue. Obviously, shout out to Dad. Obviously, without him, we wouldn't race together. Shout out to obviously the fans, obviously the Coom lot, the family. A shout out to Nate Sutton because obviously he's a camarader in the, in the paddock when we're racing together. And obviously, everyone just helps being able to get on the track. Obviously, I want to thank the RAC and the AA for getting the van up there. As well. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it's just thanking everyone who makes this real and who makes this possible. So without them, obviously it wouldn't. So yeah, Brilliant. see what 2024 brings because you'll notice a difference with the cars. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Mate, that summed up brilliantly. It's just made me so excited for the year. This whole show has like really got, got you in the feels and uh, congratulations, mate. And uh, we'll see you, hopefully we'll see you at the media day. And uh, Brilliant, the so, as long as the car's ready. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise, we'll see you at round one. But Mike Good, 2023 Saloon Car Champion. Congratulations, mate. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Well, Paul, I mean... What a shot. Wasn't it? I mean, I absolutely adored every second of that is that I feel so emotional ready for the start of the season now. And uh, I told you that it would be great that everything would work out. And and hopefully it's got you hooked ready for the new year as well. 100%. And actually, like, like you say, you, after speaking to these people and, and hearing their stories, you understand what a kind of family that Coombe is. And, and I think that's awesome. And um, look, we're really, really excited and, and privileged to be part of that family now and and to help people you know whether it be achieving a lap record or, or just starting out in motorsport it's going to be great um so yeah really excited no well thank you Hopefully so much you've reminded me being your co-host either uh, you, know, you haven't read out any abusive text so we should be okay none at all you're fine mate you <laughs> absolutely loved it i enjoyed working with you it's been an absolute pleasure hopefully we'll get plenty more of these in the uh, the my race lab uh show whatever we yeah, choose to do yeah. that we we touched on at autosport yeah um, i think that I... it'd be really cool to um to hear from you guys and, and if you want us to do something like that or if you want us to be at race weekends you know let us know because you know we don't want to be intrusive but uh we also want that want to be there for support you know how can they let you know things like that paul so look you can either obviously let let us know through um comments here or through yourself maybe or but you can email us directly as well so uh, if you want to email us you can um email support at myracelab.com so um, support at my race oh, my race lab.com see you can tell this is live because i'm even typing this as we go yeah. So there you go. Support at myracelab.com. Drop a line if you sort of Drop think that there is benefit uh, of being at the race day, certainly at the end, at the beginning of the season where it's just getting used to it. Let them know. Because if you heard the point, they've said if they don't want to be troubling people when you're busy already, which I think is a, a fair comment, an honourable comment. Uh, and equally is that you probably got wind of it is that uh, Paul and I have been talking about the fact that we could be doing this my company visual PR that create these shows for for organizations is that we could be doing uh, a, a once or twice a month show uh, and then the only reason twice because you're worldwide that's what yes, people might yes. not realize you guys are very much well not just you personally heading back to New Zealand but yeah. as a company with what you provide is worldwide uh, and and it's because it's talking about you know what are people using it for how have what have they gained from it and, and bringing real life stories yeah and I think look you know even be able to 
kind of see what someone else has done the other side of the world and how they've used yeah. it. it. It could be really impactful for you going forward. So, yeah, I think it would be really cool to kind of build those bridges and actually get drivers from you know, New Zealand, England, Australia, whatever it might be, all together on a show one day would be pretty awesome. Exactly right. We've still got powers to be to convince by the sounds of it, indeed, but we will, we'll, 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 we'll let we'll them know. That. Yeah, yeah, we'll work on that. Exactly. That's why this co-hosting was good, my friend, is that I thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. Uh, yes, Paul Cohen, uh, hopefully we'll see you back at some point during the season at Castle Coombe as well. 100%. I think there's a fair chance that you've got the bug enough that we will see you back there. Indeed. Indeed. So congratulations to everyone. Uh, it will be good to see everyone back. Let me just quickly check. We've got another message. Uh, Emma Brown says, see you all at the media day. This has been a very long winter, hasn't it, Just? Let me just remind myself on the date of that uh, media day because I could never remember off the top of my head. Uh, it is the 16th, Saturday, the 16th of March at Castle Coombe. And, and it's open that people that aren't taking part of it can come and watch as well. But we want to get as many of the drivers. We're going to have a live show during the course of the day. We'll have lots of interviews with people as we go and uh, and whatever else we can catch on the cameras. Uh, and it really is another starter pistol for that season. Paul, thank you very much, mate. No, Thank you to everyone. We'll see you soon. And from all of us here, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us for episode 77. We'll play, we at, play you out with the intro. We'll see you next month for at least one show because we're going to start talking some of the bits and pieces about what's going on at the circuit. John Mitchell says, great first episode for 2024. Thank you all. Thanks, John. Appreciate that, mate. It's good to be back. I've missed you all. It's 2024. Let's get it going.